Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. The gentleman opposite my side is Tim. This is Second Legacy, and thank you for stopping by and taking part today. What we're going to dive in today is the pistol brace resolution. That was all the flurry of fluster that passed the House. Well, now it died in the Senate. Shocker of all shockers, we told you it was going to happen across all of our independent channels. But now what does this actually mean? Because there's a lot more here than just a failed vote or a House resolution. That's what we're going to break down today. So make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. We would love to have you help grow Second Legacy with us as we get into this. But per usual, before we go, Tim, how you doing today? How's life? Oh, it's a Friday. It's got to be good. It is Friday. And uh, is. definitely looking forward to the weekend, you know? Yeah. You know what I really wish I could have been when I grew up? A woman? Well, besides that, a female weather forecaster, because you can be oh, wrong 99% yeah. of the time and get a raise. Well, it, the males just... can give you wrong 100% of the time. I mean, <laughs> get real. <laughs> I, I went out uh, on a ride last night, and you know the weather said, oh, it's you know 110 degrees and no rain for six years. You know, you, it's going to be a beautiful <laughs> night. And I rode right into yeah. a thunderstorm. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it'd be like that sometime. But other than the weather... It yes. is Friday, and so that's something to be happy about. But let's break this down, Tim, because we got a lot of things here. There's good, is it bad? There's lots happening. So let's just introduce the concept and let's kind of take it step by step, right? Let's break this bad boy down. So, Mr. Producer, could you throw number one up there? Senate rejects House panel measure overturning Biden rule on pistol braces. Now, the interesting thing about this, Tim, we talked about this consistently. It was never going to get through the Senate. Or Biden signed it into law. I mean, there was no way, right? Nope. It was, Not a chance. It was yeah, it was pure political jockeying. And yep. I, I get it, right? I, I understand oh, the mechanics absolutely. of it. Uh, probably if you would have asked me, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if I understood something like this, I would have said, no, this is a waste of time. This is dumb. Right. Why didn't they do this under a Republican president? Which is still a valid question. But of course, this <laughs> issue wasn't, this particular issue wasn't before right. a Republican president. But, you know, it just, it, it just seemed like, you know, it would seem to just a layperson that this is just, you know, complete waste of time and it's just all theatrics. But my friends at GOA, you know, explained this to other folks within the group. And mm -hmm. they said, look, guys, this is basically we're trying to send a message to the courts that even Congress wants this undone. So they had they right. gotten the votes to get it through the Senate, then it would have gone to Biden's desk for him to veto. And that was the message they were trying to create by doing right. this. And it got thwarted by two votes. Yep. But that's, see, that that's a very good summation because this entire thing was based off of a doomed operation but it had political ramifications. So right. again, even what you were saying, if it were to go to President Biden's desk and he'd be forced to veto it, there's no surprise there. He said he was going to do it. The administration didn't put out a statement saying he was going to do it. But the big pressure point here was the Senate, at least in my opinion. You had three senators in the Senate, the chamber of the Senate, who were up for re-election coming in the general election with Biden as the headliner on the ticket on the Democrat side. You had Manchin, West Virginia, and you had Tester from Montana, and then you had Cinema from Arizona. Now, the way that this shook out puts pressure on them, and the reason that they are special is because, Tim, they're from red states. Yep. They are from pro-gun states, but they're Democrats. This puts them in an awkward position. So there is an added element of a political bl uh, bludgeon. That's what we're about to show you. So, Mr. Producer, could you throw out number two for me? The Senate loaded largely along party lines Thursday to reject a Republican-sponsored resolution that it would have overturned a Biden administration rule, effectively banning the use of stabilizing braces on pistols. We have hit that ad nauseum, this next part, though. Senators Joe Manchin from West Virginia and John Tester of Montana, two centrist Democrats facing tough re-election races next year in red states, voted against the resolution, so they killed it. They both have a history of supporting gun owners' rights. Now, that's if you, if you ask me, this is the biggest win of this entire thing. You now have two centrist Democrats who tend to vote with the party line in trouble on a gun rights issue in a red state being a blue Democrat in a woke yeah. party. Yeah, I think probably the most damaging would be, you know, what Manchin did. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what his, you know, political future looks like, if he has a serious challenger or not uh, that might be able to unseat him. But I think that, I, as you note, that was obviously another one of the political tools that they were trying to employ here was to put mm -hmm. them on record and get them to come out and make a decision in front of their voter base. And I would say, based upon 
you know, Manchin's history of kind of softly supporting gun rights because right. he knows he, ha- he has to do that because if he loses that support in his home state that he might lose his seat, they put him on the spot. And I think yep. he chose wrong, and it may apply that pressure. But again, I don't know if he has a you know a real contender that might come up and be able to challenge him for his seat because he seems to yep. hold on to it. Well, he does, and that's and that's what's so interesting about it. Because I mean, as you followed, I mean, this is kind of a little more into the rabbit trail of Joe Manchin. But Joe Manchin is no favorite of the left. The left hates Joe Manchin mm-hmm. because he always betrays the Democrats, right? So now. Joe Manson potentially is in the situation where the left isn't happy with him because he's not left enough. The gun rights supporters are now upset that he just he basically killed the ATF resolution house or joint house resolution 44. Whether there's a good challenger immediately, that's yet to be seen. But there is at least on the table a guarantee of this being used against him in the future. I guarantee you, you will see it again. Oh, it'll be in political ads and stuff like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's the value. Because if they lose West Virginia and Montana in a tough Senate re-election year, they, they ain't, they, they're in a bad place. Because that's what they're up. for. Because yeah, keep in mind, the Republicans have the slimmest of majorities, and it gets slimmer by the day with you know <laughs> people being yeah. forced out of Congress, people <laughs> leaving Congress. <laughs> uh, it's getting slimmer and slimmer by the day, and and you know it, it's going to be a crazy twenty-four election cycle. We stand to gain and lose a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, if, if Biden gets reelected and if <clears throat> if the Republicans lose their sm- you know, very small mi- majority in the House and they don't take the Senate, we're going to have a rough four years. Tim, Tim, uh, I'm just going to say something in front of the beautiful viewers. Please don't put that out in the universe for me. I already went through that two years when Biden was first inaugurated. <laughs> that was that was so painful. That was so painful. Every it, oh. it, it seems it, 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 every election cycle, it seems like the candidates the choices get worse, <laughs> get and worse. The, and the consequences of the election get worse, and we're right. constantly going down this path of like certain yep. destruction. And every oh. once in a while, we just barely dodge that bullet, and we're like, okay, yep. we we eked through with our rights on this one, and then we find ourselves <laughs> on another election cycle. It, it's genuinely like we go from holy crap to okay, it's just moderately crappy right now. We never yeah. go to it's good and holding going the in line, the right. holding the line, holding the line, <laughs> and the election cycle. Like, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, Well, speaking of that, I'm going to wrap the vote. I'm going to show you the vote. And then, Tim, I've got some special goodies in here just for you because this is a Tim special. And if anyone's still watching, you guys are going to enjoy this. But, Mr. Producer, could you throw out number three for me? The resolution failed by a vote of 49 to 50. President Biden had said he would veto the measure, which the House approved June 13th. That's kind of the wrap. Okay, 49 to 50. It lost. Biden was going to veto it. We put a bow on that. But now this would not be a complete video if I didn't read To Tim, some quotes from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Chuck Schumer around what these pistol braces can do. And the last question, Tim, are you ready? This is this is Chuck Schumer. All right, lay it on us. I'm excited. All right, Mr. Producer, hit number four. (laughs) Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Democrat, New York, said repealing the rule effectively banning pistol braces would have made it easier to conceal an assault style pistol, something that's been used in mass shooting after mass shooting. There's more. Shame on them, he said on Republicans who pushed to overturn the regulation. Here it goes, and I quote, If you've ever seen a gunman fire what looks like a machine gun with one hand, that's what pistol braces allow you to do, he said. (laughs) Yep, he said that. This guy is a moron. (laughs) These are the people that are passing laws in our country. Uh Yep, assault pistols. Where do you even start with that? I mean, the the guy is, is... Okay, so... It makes it easier to conceal. Yes, doubling the length and size of it definitely makes it easier to conceal in what universe you moron. I mean, <laughs> Insert inappropriate seriously. joke here. You, you're, you're literally doubling the length of the firearm by putting the brace on it. You're not making it more concealable. It is the most <laughs> asinine argument yet. I mean, anybody with a pair of eyes can take a look at a pistol mean, without a brace and a pistol with a brace and go, oh, yeah, that looks bigger. It's not even an optical you, illusion. You mean the adjustable points? That, that doesn't make it... Okay. Yeah. It's like an accordion. No. All right. Yeah. And also putting a brace on it doesn't allow you to shoot a machine gun one handed. That's not what it does. It doesn't convert a semi automatic into some sort of assault weapon thing majig yeah. with a no. million rounds that fires fully automatic and takes satellites out of orbit. I mean, mm-hmm. th- yeah. th- they just keep layering the stupidity onto oh, their statements. Oh, oh the, 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 the silly is thick on this one. But to be fair, Tim, he didn't say it was a machine gun. 
Look at the nuance here. He said, if you've ever seen a gunman fire what looks like a machine gun <laughs> right. with one hand, that's what pistol braces allow you to do. It looks like it. It isn't it. It just looks like it. So therefore it is. You know, he was probably sitting there watching the Terminator movie, the oh, original. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, look at that. That must be a braced pistol that Arnold's that firing there. The AR-180, you know, firing that it from the hip one handed because it looks like a machine gun and it yeah. sounds like a machine gun. And it's all the yeah. brace doing it. I think I don't know. I need yeah. ice cream. Joe, I need- it's just. <laughs> <sighs> it's an M60. That's what it is. It becomes an M60 when you put a brace on it. Yeah. Yeah, Predator movies. Maybe he's watching that too. You actually, it, you actually have to hold the ammo, the ammo, <laughs> like this. I swear, these people yeah. basically watch cartoons and then come back and say, "Did you see what that gun could do?" Oh my uh, god, that was a cartoon. No, could you? Anybody that's ever seen a gunman shoot would say that that that's exactly. that's a machine gun. It has could to be you the imagine? Brain. Could you imagine what Wiley e. Coyote could do with that? <laughs> it, it, it it's so common. And, and the worst part is. Mm-hmm. They say these stupid things. They get up with stupid pictures. And then there's people that don't really understand firearms that vote, unfortunately. Right. Look at this. And they, they, they just present it in the scariest possible terms. And, mm-hmm. and they do it, it. It's comedic to us. But to people that don't oh, understand yeah. how firearms work or anything related to firearms, they'll look at that and go, oh, yes, we got to do something about that. We can't have people running around with those. It makes it a machine gun. Yeah. And, and they'll go out there and argue that on Twitter. Because oh, yeah. some moron in the Senate that... I don't know. I, it, it's we're going uh, down that rabbit hole so of moronic behavior. But Tim, I, know. I yes. think we haven't hit on one thing. This is important in his statement: an assault style pistol. So now we're did to we, assault style. Did we just did we just tip the hand there, Chucky? Because is, is, that, is that worse than an assault weapon, or is so it what, not what as bad it? as an assault weapon? It's assault style. Is that what makes that an a, assault style pistol? Because I'm pretty sure they said assault style rifles for a while, and they said that was bad. So does it make it semi-automatic? Because that's a commonality. Does it make it a magazine capacity? Because that's a commonality. It's almost like they put pistols in the same boat. They just can't do it yet because they haven't got their ARs. Almost like that's where they're going. It's almost like they want to ban handguns. Almost. 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 You are they always the astute. They you just are want always... reasonable gun restrictions. Reasonable. That's all. Just, just reasonable. be reasonable. Common just sense. Just turn them in. Be reasonable. Yep. yep. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. One last quote from the Office of Budget and Management, because this is an important one to see, and you're going to have fun with this one too. Mr. Producer, number six, and then we will go about our day. Short barrel rifles are more concealable than long guns, yet more dangerous and accurate at distance than traditional pistols. For these reasons, they are particularly lethal, which is why Congress has deemed them to be dangerous and unusual weapons subject to strict regulation since 1934, the Office of Management and Budget said in a June 12 statement of policy. Dangerous and unusual. Tim, what is that? Where is that? That strikes a chord. What's that remind me of? Stupidity. Look, the, the the whole reason SBRs are on the NFA is because uh-huh. the original law that the NRA pushed, the original law also banned handguns and required you to pay a $200 tax and register yourself in the gun. Yep. But they realized they couldn't get that through the Congress at the time in 1934, so they stripped that piece out. If you ever wonder why the SBR part doesn't make any sense, because this is where they're trying to justify the SBR part. It's yep. it's a little bit bigger than a handgun. Not as big as a rifle, but it's more deadly than both. It, it, it's They're trying to justify the, mm-hmm. the piecemeal ripped apart law that they had to piecemeal just to get it passed because it makes no sense because a handgun is something I can literally hide in my pocket, right? Right. An SBR is not something I can easily hide on my person, generally speaking, right? And yes, it is smaller than a rifle that has a 16-inch barrel, but that doesn't make it concealable. It doesn't make it more concealable or as concealable as a handgun. It doesn't mean you're going to walk into a building and go, I don't think that guy has a gun in his pants. it's just it's it's so stupid. You can have a handgun, but you can't have a rifle no, that's no. twice the size or three times the size because it's more dangerous. It just you know I I, I, I don't get it. I, I just don't get it, and I don't understand how people buy this line. It's because they, they don't, don't they understand don't firearms. It's because like, they just don't look at a picture. It, yeah. They legitimately it's because they don't know. They don't have the awareness. They don't have the exposure. They don't see what these people do to infringe upon their rights consistently. It. <laughs> The the last thing I'll say on this, and this is something we say a lot on this channel, but anyone watching this, if you think this is just guns, 
This is freedom in general. They will do it with yeah. free speech. They will do it with Second Amendment. They will do it with warrants. They will do it with due process, all at the altar of safety. This is why we fight so hard here, because this is not the end all be all. They don't just stop when they achieve it, because then they have nothing to do and then they'll be bored and we can't have that. Yep. And to that point, under the Clinton administration, Bill Clinton actually proposed legislation that would have prevented media from talking negatively about political candidates like three or four months before an election. Yep. I that think seems was, like uh, a free society, does it not? The Fairness Doctrine. I think it was called the Fairness Doctrine. Off the top of Something, my head. Something, yes. Yeah. So, you know, couldn't talk about the blue dress three months before the election. So whoa. It, it, whoa, hey, no quack necessary. No but, quack necessary. But th that is that is proof that they won't stop with the second. And that's one thing that the anti-gunners don't acknowledge, don't understand perhaps, but it, it's no different than if you lift the protections that the Congress gave to the manufacturing community, the firearms community. If you lift those protections and you allow people to sue manufacturers for the misuse of their products, Yep. Then it's not just going to be guns. They're going to they're going to sue car companies out into oblivion. They're going to sue your alcohol manufacturers into oblivion. They're going to sue everybody into oblivion. It will cascade down. Hundred percent. So anyway, well, I agree. Off my but soapbox. Think, soapbox. Put you away. No, I, th I think that was a good way to wrap this out. I think it was. You want to yeah. take us home? Absolutely, folks. If you'd like to be part of our call-in show, there is a link in the video description below. Please follow that link. Answer some questions. We'll get you on the show, and we'll have a good time answering any questions you may have, or just having a conversation about something of interest to you regarding the Second Amendment and guns in general. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you guys soon.